Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about issue number 45 of X-Force, written by Benjamin Percy, but before we dive into the story, I want to ask you a favor, if you enjoy this video, please leave a like and a comment to help the channel grow. So with that said, X-Force is now in a disarray, Colossus remain in the thrall of his brother, Mikhail, and forced to do his bidding through the power of the Chronicler. But due to the events of the Hellfire Gala, Colossus was forced to act and further betray his team and lead them into the hands of Mikhail Rasputin and cast them into a prison. So with Deadpool wandering off, and Andomino discovering Colossus's ploy in the nick of time, the remaining members was able to avoid capture. So in a world where Orcus has outlawed mutants, the remnants of X-Force are attempting to rescue their teammates with the help of a mysterious ring Domino discovered. So with that item in hand, it could serve as a key to stopping Mikhail and saving their friends. Now with that out of the way, the narrators of great works of literature rarely focus on the most interesting or powerful character in the story. Because when we observe the world of Moby Dick, it is done through Ishmael's eyes, not Ahab's. And when it comes to the great Gatsby, we follow Nick Carraway's thoughts rather than Gatsby himself. And finally, we even follow Watson when reading Sherlock Holmes. So the way into Krakoa has to be Colossus, not Charles. Because unlike Charles, Colossus can move more freely without the attention of everyone around him. And because of that ability to remain unnoticed, Colossus was chosen to be the Chronicler's muse, the Chronicler's focusing agent. Because through his sideline influence, the Chronicler can slowly bend the world of Krakoa at the behest of Colossus's brother, Mikhail Rasputin. But see, due to the Hellfire Gala, Mikhail's patience is gone, and his attention has now turned to Orcus. So with Orcus becoming number one on his hit list, the Chronicler had to study up on them by using photographs, news reports, internal history, speeches, and even sound bites. And after all that research, the person they chose to be his newest project was a lady by the name Jun Wei. Now Jun Wei was not one of the big dogs, rather she was a person who was always in the background of photos and hidden in the margins of meetings. She was never the person shaking hands and signing documents or even the person taking the podium. But what she was, was the one who can affect change from within Orcus in a quiet, subtle way. So with that said, Colossus was sent to kidnap her despite the motivations not being his own. But while he was doing that, deep down on some subconscious level, Colossus understood that he was hunting for his own replacement. So after Colossus retrieved his target and taken her to his brother, Mikhail proceeded to bind her arms using his mutant ability. The same molecular geographic ability he used to manipulate those around him, because to Mikhail everything is malleable to him, even loyalty. So with that said, that ultimately makes him the true traitor, and as the true traitor he will one day turn on the Chronicler as well. But before that day comes, Colossus would be the next victim in his rise to power. So with a single touch, Mikhail teleported Colossus away, to his new prison. And if the Chronicler was being honest, he has no idea where Mikhail banished Colossus, because one thing that Mikhail can't risk is his brother going rogue and betraying him. But regardless of his banishment, the Chronicler suspects that Colossus will most likely survive, and when he wakes up, he would most likely feel extremely disoriented and sickened by guilt and shame for everything he made him do. So with that out there, we see Colossus wakes up in front of a canvas that he must be the one to fill. So following that, we transfer to Vegas with Deadpool lounging by the pool when a phone call from Sage comes in. And as you may have guessed, this call was a call for help, because right now the X-Force really needs some more manpower to accomplish their goals, but in a twist, Deadpool shuts down the offer and calls himself an Avenger now, considering he is now a part of Captain America's Unity Squad. Which on a side note is really messed up. But Deadpool is going to be Deadpool and travel to the next exciting thing, and at this moment, X-Force is no longer excited. So with that said, Deadpool then hangs up on his former team and gracefully leaps into the pool. So with Sage and Domino rejected, the two members of X-Force was not about to give up, because these two would stop at nothing to save their captive comrades from Mikhail, and if Domino was right, then that ring would be their key to finding them. But all they needed to do was find a way to hack said ring in order to find Mikhail's location. But see that is easier said than done, because Sage is fully aware of her limitations, and this ring is far beyond her skill set. But just because she is unable to use it, doesn't mean she doesn't have any ideas on who could. So with Sage and Domino heading to the Sanctum Sanctorum, we jump back over to Mikhail introducing the Chronicler to June. And of course the Orca soldier wanted nothing to do with helping any mutant cause, including Mikhail. 
But see June had no say so in the matter, because within moments, the chronicler sat down and proceeded to work his magic. And no matter how hard she fought his mutant ability, the chronicler quickly had June spilling all her deepest secrets. So as June disclosed all of Orca's plans to the chronicler, we hop over to Colossus painting a picture, a picture of his brother in a monstrous form eating him alive. So with panic rushing into Colossus's mind, we transition back over to the Sanctum Sanctorum with both Sage and Domino breaking into the window, and as they was making a remark about how easy it was to enter, out of nowhere, Dr. Strange Cape surrounded them, and before they knew it, they was pinned to the ground helpless. So with the introductions out of the way, Dr. Strange gives Sage and Domino a chance to explain themselves for breaking it his home. In which they do, the two mutants brings up how this ring is a puzzle they can't solve. So in order to keep the item contained, Domino explains how they keep it hidden within a no-place tumor because it serves as a lead line briefcase. So with the item now in hand, Dr. Strange started to examine the ring hidden within. But in order for him to get a more accurate read on it, he proceeded to ask about Mikhail's power set. So with that out there, Sage tells him that Mikhail can alter matter to the point where he can turn flesh into stone. But see there is much more to it than just that, because the same power can also allow him to build and to move. Like for example, he could create a space in between space, like a rift between dimensions, and an alleyway between buildings. So with that detail provided, Dr. Strange walks over to his bookcase and took out a book, because Rasputin power reminded him of previous teachings. So as the team jump head first into research, we transition back over to the Chronicler and Mikhail, and by the looks of it Mikhail is tired of waiting. Because like I said before, the Chronicler needs to build a connection base on empathy, which is something Rasputin knows nothing about. So with anger building up within Mikhail, the Chronicler once again tries to explain his process, but Mikhail wasn't trying to hear it. And instead of respecting his workflow, Mikhail tells him to hurry up and get to the plot because his process was irrelevant to him. So with that said, the chronicler replied by saying, he understands that he is a man of action, so he should most likely like the next part. And with those words, June reached for her weapon and opened fire several times into the back of Mikhail Rasputin as the chronicler looked on in excitement. Because up to this point, the Chronicler had his own plan, his own plan to deal with his jailer, and the way he did it was by making June keep her gun on her the entire time for the right moment. And just to ensure that would play out the way he wanted, he made Colossus overlook it when taking her prisoner. So with victory in his grasp, the Chronicler jumped in excitement for his newfound freedom. But see, just because he wrote for June to take out Mikhail didn't necessarily mean he wrote for her to be loyal to him. So with June turning the weapon in the direction of the Chronicler, the mutant quickly dashed back to his desk and resumed his writing. And just in the nick of time, he managed to write his way into safety. So with his safety secure, the Chronicler made his escape as the pocket dimension started to shake. So with the void breaking down, it was now or never for the members of X-Force to escape. So with that said, Colossus turns around only to see his brother bleeding out on the floor. So with all hell breaking loose, what will Colossus' next moves be? But for now this issue comes to an end. Now when it comes to this issue, I am happy that this arc could be nearing its conclusion despite it being really good. But the only question I have is what will happen after Colossus is free for a prolonged period of time, because unless I am mistaken, the Chronicler once said if he stopped writing for Colossus, he could end up dead. So down in the comment section below let me know your thoughts about this issue and what predictions you could have moving forward. So with that established, I hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.